Hey Riley Besties, welcome back to the Writing with Anthony podcast where we talk about all things writing in today's episode. I am so excited because we have a wonderful, beautiful guest on the podcast. We have the beautiful Lee. Say hi Lee, kind of introduce yourself. Hi, um, I'm Lee and for those of y'all, if y'all don't know me, I'm over on Instagram as Lee, Lee Crescent Book. Um, I'm a writer and a student and I'm so excited to be on this podcast today. So good to have you. I love your writing, you know, platform. And I think you, again, have like such a beautiful presence in the writer, writergram community. Um, and I've been wanting to have you on the podcast for a long time. So I'm very <laughs> excited. Today, we're going to be talking all about ideas and how we get our ideas for our novels, kind of like the seed of our ideas and what different elements of like media, whether it be like books, TV shows, um, you know, even music, how that inspires us to create our worlds or our characters. So we're going to talk all about that and also a little bit about Lee's amazing um, project called In the Midnight Blue, which is kind of a sci-fi fantasy. And yeah, she was talking a little bit about that before we started the podcast. And I'm very excited to learn more about it. Um, but first, I want to kind of maybe ask you, Lee, kind of more about your life firstly and also um, if you wanted to share anything here yeah, about what you're doing with school and college and sorts of yeah your plans of even like career and how that has to do with yeah your writing so take it away okay so I am a student as I mentioned before I'm finishing up high school while taking community college classes and then in the fall I'm planning to transfer to a bigger university where I'm going to officially start like my degree my major but um I'm I'm studying nursing so that's what I plan to do in college and I plan to have a minor in something writing or creative related screenwriting journalism um creative writing <laughs> I forgot the word for it it just depends on which university I end up attending because they all have different programs that you can mix and match mm -hmm. with your major mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. It's good that you still have, you know, the want to continue writing and have that as a part of your sort of uni experience, because I think that's really important um, instead of just kind of keeping it always at home. I feel like that gets really exhausting. So hopefully that could be really, really fun. Um, and it's so good to kind of know that you have a different sort of, I don't know, career path that's kind of not traditional in a sense for like a writer because when I think of writers I think of like yeah going into yeah journalism or like screenwriting as you were saying with your minors but you have such like a huge vision for wanting to be like an ER um, nurse right so that's really really cool and I think you did say that that inspired a little bit about like your characters and sort of like yeah what's your story about that if we can quickly talk about your experience and want to do that career and how that kind of maybe subconsciously feeds into your characters. Yeah, absolutely. So for a little bit of a background, I knew I always wanted to go into the medical field, even though my passion has always been with like writing and reading. I knew for a career, I wanted to help people. I wanted to be some sort of first responder. I thrive off of chaos and just craziness because that's just how yeah. I grew up. So I think like being an ER nurse is going to be a great career path for me but um I think like with writing it kind of comes down to I always knew it was my calling to create but also to be a caretaker a nurse a mother a wife and I think that shows a lot in some of my characters because mm -hmm. I write a lot of healers medics characters of that sort just depending on where they fit into the story so it's mm. always kind of come down to like being my calling for a lot of various reasons. I also knew I wanted to study medicine, but not go to med school or surgical residency, dentistry, mm. just because I didn't want to spend that much time in school. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just knew me personally. Um, <laughs> that yeah, was that's... too much for me. Honestly, yeah, like I cannot. Like people who like study medicine, like, oh my gosh, like you're going to be at uni for 10 years. And that seems not like too no, not me. And we were kind of like talking about how if medicine or like, yeah, sort of science didn't have math in it, I feel like it would be so much better. But you can't do anything <laughs> with math, apparently, or anything not with math. But um, yeah, that's really good to hear about your sort of calling and how that influences the identities of your characters. I think that's 
so beautiful and I love when writers do that where they find such like clear parts of themselves within their stories um and yeah I think that's amazing but um I think it's now time to talk specifically about our projects and how we've gotten inspired um yeah by different sorts of art basically um so did you want to maybe start with your amazing project um and talk about yeah what sort of elements inspired that and maybe even like when and when you got the idea and what sort of process you went through from getting that seed so I want to hear about it yeah I'll try to keep it kind of concise and not ramble on for hours and hours <laughs> no, feel, but... free. feel free to ramble <laughs> for those of y'all that don't know my main project is called in the midnight blue it is a young adult dystopian science fantasy type um, think like the Hunger Games, Divergent, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, just but like more young adult tailored, obviously. But basically back in 2019, I started getting ideas for a book. And then when COVID hit in 2020, I was basically stuck in my house. Like mm. there, you couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. So I read all the time. I ordered tons of books because I'd always been a big reader, but I started getting into like the YA genre and like book talk. Mm -hmm. So I was ordering books and reading and I was like, hey, wait, I can do this. I read this one book called Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. Super underrated and one of the best books I've ever read personally. But that, after reading that book, I was like, I'm going to try to do this. So I wrote the first draft of In the Midnight Blue in spring of 2020 so it was between like March and May mm -hmm. and then I wrote like a second book for the series which is not really relevant to it anymore <laughs> but it's still there so I might as it reaching um I started writing a third book and then I took the first book I reworked it I reworked it about seven times now wow. so it's gone through a lot of changes right. um but the draft I'm on now is my favorite um, and the main, like, integral part of the story still remains the same. It's at its heart, it's a story about friendship and Aww. rebels and just, mm. like, I know it sounds corny. There's definitely some more, like, cliche tropes in there, you know, like, oh, the government's bad, magic mm -hmm. powers are illegal, you know. But mm -hmm. I think it has its own twists on it to where it can be unique and people will like it without finding it too tropey, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm hmm oh no that's really cool I love that or even just like Star Wars and Hunger Games like if you I will automatically buy it to be honest um yeah that's really cool is there any sort of specific scenes from you know the Hunger Games because I'm obsessed with the Hunger Games I feel like everyone is right now after the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes <laughs> came out um but any sort of specifics came out um like what inspired or like themes perhaps about those sorts of stories instead of it being like more so oh it's a science fiction or like oh it's a dystopian so that fits in um what sort of core I want to dig a little bit deeper um if you have yeah, anything no. so I think that um the villages like so in the story without giving too much away you have like these territories one of them is called midnight one of them is called blue there's some other mm -hmm. ones and they have these cities and that's where like all of the wealthy people live but then they have villages within the territories and these people in the villages are watched over by the government agents they're given food rations they're heavily policed they're mm -hmm. they can't really live the life they want to they're under constant watch from the government and it's like that in the cities too but to a lesser extent mm -hmm. and i think that these villages are heavily inspired by like the districts Mm -hmm. which was actually a connection I made after writing the first right, couple drafts right. of the books. I didn't mm -hmm. even intentionally make it that way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing. Um, yeah. And then like, just like the rebellion of all of it. There's, you know, they're taking people out of power who shouldn't be there. It's a bunch of kids, you know, 16, 17 years old from mm -hmm. all different places and backgrounds fighting against the adversity of their world there's so much wrong with their world they're trying to see the good in their world it's a found family you know there's a lot of just <gasps> found family arcs. oh my gosh yeah that's the biggest <laughs> trope found family yes. oh I'm obsessed <laughs> with that trope oh no that's really cool I love that sort of idea and I love how yeah as you said that connection came after that you kind of yeah kind of yeah with the districts and how that influence maybe your idea of villages or maybe like vice versa because 
I definitely feel that. Um, because for example, Ghost Side, I guess that's one of my projects yet I'm working on. I feel like a lot of people maybe know um Project Ghost. Um, yeah, so I didn't really realize until I started the book um that it kind of was a little bit inspired, not inspired, but more so I saw the similarities with Raven Boys or the Raven Boy cycle. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I remember actually reading that book. So I did have it in my mind. So that's maybe like where I made the connection subconsciously. And again, I love how that works, how writers get those ideas and they don't really realize it until they finish the book um but yeah the raven cycle was an interesting book it definitely has that sort of spooky vibe um which is really really cool um but I didn't really like it too much and maybe that's why I wanted to pursue yeah writing ghost side more of a fun sort of story um but another thing that really inspired ghost side is actually um Phoebe Bridges and her oh, lyrics yeah I love yeah Phoebe. No, she seriously like and I saw her actually in laneway I saw her like yeah in Australia oh, yeah. so that was my oh, whole her. life I loved it <laughs> it was amazing I really want to see boy genius so mm-hmm. bad I love him so good um anyways a lot of her lyrics like Scott Street um the end like all those really like yeah sort of it's kind of ghosty like I love her lyricism mm-hmm. and her voice because it's so uh beautiful like her high sort of pitch voice it's is haunting. so like it's haunting and then like the context of her you know actual lyrics is so depressing and sad <laughs> so it's kind of like that juxtaposition that kind of reinforces why it sounds so spooky and just so beautiful um funeral also by F- um F- phoebe bridges sorry definitely did inspire <laughs> ghost side just a lot of different lyrics just like a lot different sorts of vibes and it definitely is so for a lot of my other projects there's this one project called project prison that is directly inspired by one of her songs um but I won't disclose that yet because I've yet to actually write the first draft um and then lastly what actually inspired by ghost side um is my life um (laughs) my life I feel like a lot of books are inspired by yeah even as you were saying with um sorts of that identity from wanting to be a caretaker and that sort of being your calling being inspired and yeah you can see it through your characters so a lot of the ghost boys I literally see myself in um and obviously that's done pretty intentionally and throughout the book you definitely get to know their characters so I think that's really really fun um so a lot of different a big jumble of things inspired project ghost and if you maybe looked at a couple of my posts about this project um you will see that yeah I also got inspired by that actual real life experience of walking down my street one night and then looking into like a car and just imagining a ghost boy smiling at me like that's so like inbuilt in my brain and I think like it was just I need to write the book so a lot of different jumble of things um inspired ghost side um but did you have any other projects um Lee that you want to talk about that kind of yeah you can talk about inspiration and how you got those ideas um for these books so yeah I do have several other projects I'm working on and I will get into those in a moment but when you were talking about how like sometimes we won't realize we've connected something back to Mm. like or we were inspired by something until we've actually written the draft you've been like oh wait a second like I didn't even realize uh, this like resembled this book that I love. So in In the Midnight Blue, I have a main character and his name is Gail, like from the Hunger (gasps) Games. But I had not read, watched, or known anything about the Hunger Games until after I wrote In the Midnight Blue. Because I wasn't like a Hunger Games kid until like, Uh you know, a couple years ago. Yeah, And I tried changing his name a few times, but it just didn't really fit like with the Mm. character. So he's just Mm -hmm. Gail like honestly um, but, yeah. Um, yeah I think I have a couple of other projects that are heavily inspired by other media but my favorite one is Project Skylark and oh. that one is like a Top Gun meets Divergent because I'm a big fan of the Top Gun movies like yeah. my Roman yeah. Empire I love <laughs> them so much so this book is like a dystopian book where they go to like instead of going to like the dauntless compound or whatever in divergent they go to like the flight school and they train Mm. and they learn how to like fly and like defend like their dystopian nation's military or 
Not defend it. their dystopian nation and there's powers but i think that's like the biggest one i would say has been influenced by another piece of media wow oh, that's so then, cool uh, yeah and then like in the midnight blue it was just a mix of like it's inspired by star wars by the hunger mm-hmm. games by the hundred um mm. any kind of like fantasy like red queen the lunar chronicles just all of yeah. these stories <gasps> Red Queen. Yeah, I feel like that is so much, it has so much truth to like how different little themes inspire new ideas. Because I honestly think there's no such thing as like an original idea. There's just Mm -hmm. inspirations and sort of taking an idea further or converging two different elements of one story um, or two different elements of two different stories. Yeah, so I think that's the most beautiful thing about books and why there's always something different, something um yeah sort of that captures you so when you said also before about you're kind of a little bit you think like people will kind of look past the tropes I think that's so true like when there's Mm -hmm. a story that kind of captures you so much you will love it and I think especially when it's something new kind of like your story where it's kind of um novel in a way because it is a novel Mm -hmm. um anyway (laughs) yeah so I think that's definitely so true because when I think about like my favorite movies or something like I watched Alien do you know the Alien franchise um I don't think I do Mm -mm. um yeah literally it's like a sci-fi where basically there's an alien and it tries to kill everyone (laughs) on the ship and that was like the first time it was done like in cinema and people look back to it and say like oh that's so like that's so cliche but it's like that was the first time like and that's what captures it's like the originality sort of thing so I honestly love tropes and I think it's also down the line something really good to think about when you are marketing and you know thinking about all that stuff um it's also something really good for the YA genre um Mm -hmm. I want to kind of maybe talk a little bit about I don't know have you read Lightlock at all by Alex Astor I have not should I (laughs) <laughs> oh I don't know it's like a huge book talk book and I did like a yeah. reading vlog on it and I honestly mm-hmm. did enjoy it because it's so like tropey and it's so yeah YA. I've heard mixed things I've heard people who love it and people who hate mm-hmm. it it's on my list I just like it's not a priority right now but yeah. now I'm more intrigued <laughs> I mean it's it's a fun book I kind of it kind of gives me vibes of like um Skylark kind of how you you're saying about mm-hmm. that but Ooh. it's kind of more of a magical fantasy Fantasy. book um but I honestly really like it I'm inspired so much by Alex Astor as a um yeah author and how young she is and how she pioneered (laughs) believed in her book um but I liked it I think it's just because a lot older readers have a bigger or like larger expectation of like the writing of the plot and stuff like that when I thought it was like I wouldn't be thinking about this potential plot inconvenience because I'll just be so enjoying the book sort of thing yeah Um, that's how I am too people like to hate on tropes because Hmm. like for whatever reason and there's a few that I don't like but for the Hmm. majority tropes are tropes because they're popular like the found family trope is my like biggest inspiration for in the midnight blue Hmm. Mm -hmm. there's so many all of my favorite media has that trope yeah. Um, I would also say that, like, In the Midnight Blue is heavily inspired by Six of Crows and, like, the Three oh. Sugars. Oh, my but gosh. Also... <laughs> Sorry, I love the Six of Crows. I love Me too. Shoes. Love it. Mm. Um, but I'd say, like, too, sometimes the media I take inspiration from isn't mm. necessarily have anything to do with my book or the genre. Right. Like, for example, one of my favorite shows is called Station 19. It's the firefighter show y'all yeah. probably also really <laughs> talked about. And I love it so much because the found family is just, like, perfect. Mm. Absolutely perfect. And I think I've taken that element from watching the show and, like, learning the trope so much and put it, mm. like, into my own work. And wow. I started watching it around the same time in the Midnight Blue became a thing. So it's definitely, uh-huh. like, heavily influenced by certain elements of that show despite them being nothing like each other wow honestly Lee that's like such a good point because I never really thought about that that's sort of some subconscious theme you can find in different sorts of elements or different sorts Mm of yeah forms of media um and it can be completely like irrelevant at least genre like 
Um, so that's really, really interesting. I never really thought about it like that. There's definitely some projects, yeah, that I can definitely see that in a little bit. Um, let me see. I got some little bit of notes. Um, mm -hmm. For example, like the City of Zeal, which is like one of my fantasy projects. I've kind of shelved for like a year or two. Um, I love I it so that. much. I know. Um, but that's heavily really inspired by just my my want to like go otherworldly. Um, so it's not really inspired by a particular book, really, or like a particular thing. Again, it's like just a theme. I just sort of want um, or something that yeah. I like. So I just, yeah, sort of got inspired by a whole jumble of different things that were just feelings, not so much pinpointing that's what inspired that. So I think that's really, really I true for a lot of projects. Yeah, sort of these feelings. And I think that kind of what comes down to it, um, where like apart from the plot or the characters, there's a sort of core theme in your story and that's inspired by a whole different thing um, that's kind of, like I don't know above all the different mediums of art um yeah that we can experience and I think feeling is the most important part of being in a story because I don't know if you feel it like I feel like all writers feel it when they start writing their book or like whenever they just get back into their story they have this feeling of just like this is what my book's about mm, um, it's like butterflies almost like yeah. excitement it's like oh my gosh like this is my story like I created this mm -hmm. people love this people follow me to see my content about the characters mm -hmm. in the world yeah. I've created I'm like that's insane yeah. <laughs> yeah no honestly that I love that that's really really cool um I think we've talked a lot about our ideas and sort of how we got inspired um and I love that note that we just left on <clears throat> but I think I now we're going to talk a little bit about um sort of writing struggles and how writing has become an outlet for our life so when we get obsessed with ideas and we get obsessed with our characters you know how we can use that as a means of escape at least that's how I started to write um I think I've shared it a couple of times on my podcast where yeah I literally came home one day I think like grade eight or something I was just like I'm so bored of this life I need <laughs> to get into a new world um and that's when I wrote my first little tiny book um which I feel like that's a universal experience just being like yeah. okay I'm done with this I know how Honestly. to write I know how to read we're writing a book yes. and then from there it just goes like oh my gosh like yeah so um maybe we can talk a little bit as we finish up just kind of about why we love writing and why we find it so attractive to us as a means of escape instead of turning to other sorts of parts of our lives or anything like that because I think honestly it's such a beautiful thing and the, the connection that a writer has with their writing is so different and so like unique so maybe if you had any thoughts about that and just how like what attracts you to writing mm -hmm. in a sense so I mean the reason why I started writing I grew up I loved reading all sorts of different types of books and I felt so connected to these books that like the second best thing or like the next best thing to reading them and immersing myself in the story was writing my own mm -hmm. and I think that's why a bunch of younger people who write their first books it's like a little knockoff of like the Hunger Games mm -hmm. or of Divergent mm -hmm. or whatever they love at the time because I feel like that's so common you know a lot of writers will be like oh haha my first book was a knockoff of this and that because they want to be part of that story. They want to create, like creating is the next best thing that they can do to be mm -hmm. in that story. But mm -hmm. also just growing up too, you know, I had a lot of anxiety like as a kid and I would make up these stories and these characters in my head and they would help me like kind of cope with what I was feeling, whether it was at school, at swim practice, because I was a competitive swimmer for a really long time. Oh wow! So I'd yeah. like make up stories yeah. and come up with ideas while practicing <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's just a good outlet overall whether it's because you have depression anxiety or if you just want to create and you're overflowing with creative energy like mm -hmm. and for me it's both mm -hmm. honestly that's so sweet because as you were explaining so many things run through my mind and this is usually what happens I love listening to people just like talk about their passion so that was honestly beautiful um and what I was kind of thinking about, I mean, I heard that you're Christian, which is really cool. And I'm also Christian. But I think what's beautiful is that obviously we're made by a creator. And what's 
and like what's the best thing to do is to create ourselves to create. And, yeah I love that yeah and I think that's sort of like an innate um calling for a lot of writers and I feel like a lot of people we create relationships we create things you know it's something that is mm-hmm. so in you know in our sort of character as a human um yeah. so I definitely think that's so um true at least yeah definitely for me and I did have a little question what was your because I know you kind of kind of talked a little bit about um everyone has that knockoff um first story can I ask what your first story was or what sort of like what's your first story that you remember okay so like I guess I have two kind of examples of this honestly in the midnight blue was a under the never sky and a divergent Mm. knockoff when I first wrote it when I was like 13 but my first actual book that I finished and this is really embarrassing but it was a giant fan fiction on Wattpad uh Mm -hmm. Marvel the hunger games Grey's anatomy and station 19 that was my first book and oh my god and like embarrassing and I wish I still had it because like I deleted that account a long time ago without even thinking but that was like the first book I finished and then I wrote in the midnight blue like six months later and I was like okay I can do this (laughs) oh my gosh honestly that's impressive converging all those well like honestly like fan fiction writers you need so much like creativity and like mm-hmm. coordination I feel like that's insane yeah um, no, I write but... it for fun just to keep my skills yeah. going while I'm too busy with school to like focus mm-hmm. on my main project and it's it's fun but like make no mistake it's it's real writing you know it is no for sure I think that's such a good tip as well um just kind mm-hmm. of like I like to also do spin-offs of my own books that are finished mm-hmm when I'm just bored I just like write a cute meet cute or like something like that I do this too all the time yeah Yeah, it's so fun fun? um, yeah I love it it's so good um but I do remember my first story I wrote um it was actually inspired by um what's it called you know the avatar like the blue people avatar sci-fi yes I do yeah like I don't know why like I'm don't, I don't write sci-fi now like I love sci-fi and I think it's because my both my parents um are scientists and they love science fiction like movies that's like all I watched when I was a kid so like Avatar was one of my mom's favorite my dad hates it though <laughs> because he thinks it's so creepy and all that anyways um but I am gotten so inspired because I'm like I just want to go into another planet because as I said yeah. before like I was just so like I want to ride dragons like I don't want to be on this earth I want to be you know (laughs) somewhere even and that's so real and valid like I feel that so much like Mm. that's why I write yeah honestly and I did have another thought about like the Christian sort of side of things but it's also like at least I say this kind of to a couple of my friends about how like why I'm a Christian but one of the reasons is is that I always don't feel like I belong on this earth as a sense like I've never felt truly home so writing stories for me is like an outlet to feel you know somewhere where I belong because I've written that world I've kind of made those characters and I know you know that it's such a big part of me so that's why I'm so attracted to writing so I don't know if you have felt like that um in your experience of just like you know my home is like in heaven so like I always feel so like (laughs) at loss so that's also what pushed me to be a writer I feel quite subconsciously but realizing it now I think that's the beauty of it Mm. for me it was less about not having like a home because you know I love my family I love my friends Mm -hmm. you know my my faith But growing up, I didn't have a lot of friends or I didn't have like the best friends, Mm -hmm. the best people to be around. Now I do. I have an amazing group of friends. I've found my people, you know, it's just, Mm -hmm. it will, you will get to that point. If you, Mm -hmm. like for anyone listening, if you're struggling with that, you will find your people. Trust me, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, it's more about like when I was younger and I didn't have that writing mm-hmm. these characters I was writing the friends I always wanted and the Aww. relationships I wanted and just the kind of like love and adventures mm-hmm. so yeah Aww, that's so good I honestly mm-hmm. like feel that like my characters are my best friends like it's sad and perhaps delusional but <laughs> here we are <laughs> um it happens yeah can't honestly. be a writer without delusion you literally like it's that's literally what our job is to be 
perfect. <laughs> Delusional. Um, anyways, I think that's kind of just about it. Did you have any final thoughts that you wanted to share or maybe just close up your thoughts um, and remind the audience kind of where to find you and stuff like that? I think that could be really, yeah, fun. Yeah, so um, I will say one thing that if you are like stuck on creating characters or you need some inspiration, find a playlist and you will find a song that will inspire mm -hmm. your books, your characters. I love either developing my characters based off of songs or relating songs to them and giving them backstories and problems right. and situations <laughs> and relations based off of that song. So like if you're mm -hmm. ever stuck or like in a creative rut, turn to your playlist because it will help. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. um, for those of y'all who don't follow me or have never seen me before, <laughs> Mm -hmm. um y'all can find me on instagram at lee crescent books that's like my main social media platform mm -hmm. right now i'm thinking of eventually getting on book talk but <gasps> not right now Ooh. probably when i'm like in college in mm -hmm. a dorm i have like my own like more space and yeah. time to like create yeah. content like that's consistent mm -hmm. but yeah y'all can find me there mm -hmm. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Lee, for being on this podcast. Mm. It was so good meeting you. Um, and yeah, talking about your stories. I'm so excited for that project. Um, it sounds so amazing. And I feel like it will be a bestseller one day. I can't wait to like buy it if you, you eventually publish it. So thank you so much again for being on this podcast. And thank you all the listeners who listened in. And yeah, I hope to see you in my next writing video. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Oh, awesome. That was so fun. That was so fun. Oh my gosh. I, I